So you've ordered a Wilbanks homeostatic incubator. You're joining professional breeders, hobbyists around the world who have chosen Wilbanks for their incubation because this is the most state-of-the-art incubator that's ever been produced. Uh, these are manufactured in China. They're built on a commercial refrigerator base, so they're very well insulated, but they work a little differently than other incubators that have been out on the market. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about how they work and then at the end, I'm gonna show you guys how to calibrate it, which is super simple, but it's a good thing to do just to get everything dialed in perfect. So the incubators in the past, uh, including homemade incubators, use a proportional thermostat. Most of the time we were choosing proportional because uh, we weren't confident about how well insulated our boxes were, or uh, we just wanted to make sure that we were pumping uh, steady heat into the incubator all the time just to kind of maintain an exact temperature. These incubators you use an on-off thermostat. Now I use on-off thermostats in my incubation rooms. I, uh, an on-off thermostat will build up to temperature, then it, when it hits the set point, it will drop slowly depending on how insulated the room or the box is, and it, then it will cut the heat back on and uh, reach temperature again. So you're dealing with more of an average. So it's just two different concepts. But trust me, I have incubated tens of thousands of eggs with on-off thermostats. So it works perfect. We designed this with an on-off thermostat because we're also cooling and you can't have a compressor uh, on a proportional thermostat. It just won't work. You know, you have to cut the compressor on and then turn it off. So. What happens is, if I was incubating ball python eggs in this incubator, in the Wilbanks incubator, I would set it at 90 degrees. I like to incubate around 89. I like to be just under 90 degrees. And that'll work perfectly because what'll happen is your incubator will heat up to 90. It'll cut the heat. It, because it's well insulated, it'll very slowly creep down to 87. It'll just touch 87 and it'll, be, it'll pop right back up to 90. So what you're doing is you're building an average uh, because you have your eggs in a chamber, uh, you know, a, a egg box. It will, that, those temperatures change more slowly. So what it will do is you're, you'll be incubating at, at an average of about 89 degrees. So it, it's just absolutely perfect the way it's designed. People, when they use the push sensors, you know, it creates a graph of your constant temperatures throughout the day. They get a little nervous when they see it slightly deviating at a couple times a day. That is how the incubator is designed. I, I think it's a good idea to have some sort of sensor to alert you in case uh, you have some sort of a mishap, but also understand we have safeties in the incubator to where it, if it starts uh, just pumping heat all the time, it will, it, it'll automatically cut itself off. So it's, uh, it's got safety built in, but I like redundancies and safety systems. But this, you know, you have so much money involved in, in an incubator full of eggs, you know, it'd be a tragedy if something bad happened. Um, these incubators have been tested for three years before we ever came to market. At this point, we have many of them out in the marketplace. A lot of my friends, professional breeders, are using these to incubate a lot of different kinds of species. I've been getting nothing but great positive feedback. Um, it's the, you can have confidence that this incubator is working as designed even if you see temperature fluctuations. You have to understand that nature is not a proportional thermostat. You know, how often do you go out in the middle of the night and then you go out at noon and it's, you say, wow, it's the same temperature it was in the middle of the night last night. It, it never happens. You know, you have fluctuations throughout the day building an average incubation temp. Um, uh, another story that kind of uh, drives this point home is uh, many years ago, one of my friends went over to Africa and he was telling me about the the pits that they incubate thousands of ball python eggs in, they just put them in these holes in the ground with uh, grass and things on top of it. 
And he said they took temperature measurements and during the day those pits would get up to 105 degrees. And, and I thought, well, how could that even work? And he said at night they were dropping down to like in the 80s. So the wild fluctuations, but what it was doing was it was creating an average. So don't worry about temperature fluctuations, it's working exactly as designed. Now on to calibration, let me show you how to calibrate. So when you get your new incubator, you're going to want to unwrap it, put it where it goes, and then let it sit for about an hour to let the oils from the compressor settle. Uh, it's just a good idea, just like if you buy a refrigerator, it's not a good idea to just plug it right in. After you've waited your hour, plug it in, set it to the temperature that you want to incubate at, and then we're going to start a calibration on it. During the shipping process, the manufacturing process, calibration can get off. So it's a good idea to calibrate every new incubator. That's a super simple process. I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So what you want to do is you want to get a thermometer that you trust, that you know is spot on. Put it on the second shelf down. Set your temperature to what you want to incubate at. Um, and then shut your door. Let it sit for four hours with the door shut. So after you've waited for four hours, uh, you come back to the incubator, open the door, look at your thermometer, and let's say that your chamber temperature is reading 89 and your thermometer is reading 87. So you're two degrees off in your calibration. It's really 87 in here, but the microprocessor thinks it's 89. Super easy to adjust. Just hold down the up and the down arrow at the same time for about three seconds and it'll start flashing a zero. Now you're going to go down arrow minus two because we need to tell it that it's two degrees cooler than it thinks it is. And so that's all there is to it. Now the microprocessor will adjust the, the temperature and it will uh, bring it back up to being perfectly accurate. If you were two degrees above, you would just use the up arrow. You would add positive uh, temperature to the uh, microprocessor so that it will uh, read the correct temperature. Then what I would do is I'd close your door, leave it for another four hours, and check it again just to make sure that it's spot on. I've never really had one need to be calibrated more than once, but I, I guess it is possible and because you know, there's so much value that goes in an incubator. I just think it's a good idea to just make sure that it's perfect. And then once you get done, that's all there is to it. It's, uh, it's calibrated. Um, the incubator will work great for you. Um, again, I really appreciate you guys, the faith that you've put in us. And uh, I'm super excited about all the positive feedback we're getting about our incubators. And um, just thank you guys. And if you have any questions, you can go to our website we have a frequently asked questions section and also you can click the chat icon at any time and you can get a quick answer to your questions. So thank you guys. I hope you have a great day.